I'm one of his uh, protégés and Dr. Standout probably wait, wait for you. <laughs> I never knew him, but I've seen his name. Uh -huh, Dr. Stanton and uh, Dr. Markham. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was the old crowd that we used to be right. there when I was there and everything. And I, I went to school when I, uh, I was working at Firestone for uh, uh, full time and mm -hmm. going to school. What? Really? Okay. Yeah, it was an experience. I, I bet. I but bet. if it hadn't been for Dr. Knocker and Dr. Stanton, I don't think I would have finished. And it really an uh, inspiration. And Dr. Markham, too. I don't know if Dr. Markham still uh, remember me. I saw him the other day. He didn't know who I was. Really? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to stir the memory up a little bit. <laughs> but it was a, it was a uh, very good experience going right. to that school. I've been to other schools, but I I drifted from here to there and everywhere. But see, what it is is that I had a lot of poetry called perseverance. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was determined to, to, to okay. get a degree. All right. And I had an opportunity here. Right. Okay, well, we're going to start the interview okay. in here. Um, basically, thank you for letting me come to your home today. Um, this interview was part of the East Wilson Oral History Project, and what we're doing is we're trying to, you know, collect memories, reminiscences, you know, of people who've lived in East Wilson, worked here, and, you know, have been part of the community for many years. Um, so the first thing I'll ask, I'll, both of you, since we're doing, a, uh, I guess, a double interview here today, if y'all could just please tell us what your name is and how long you've lived here in, in East Wilson. Okay, my name is um, Mildred Hall Creech, mm -hmm. and um, I've been living in Wilson. I'm 62 years old, and I was born next door. And um, I was we moved here when I was 12 years old. Mm -hmm. I went away and went to college, and came back. My parents lived here, and my Mother, she was the last one to pass. My father passed in 97, mm -hmm. and she passed in 2007. So I transitioned from next door to here. Mm -hmm. um, so they lived in this house here? That's okay. right. Okay. Mm -hmm. <coughs> um, I graduated from Fike High School mm -hmm. in 1969. Mm -hmm. Prior to that, I went to the Catholic school here. Mm -hmm which was St. Alphonse's School that was on Carroll Street, okay. which now has a church there. Mm -hmm. um, at the, um, that went to the eighth grade. Mm -hmm. After the eighth grade, going to the ninth grade, mm -hmm. even though I was right across the street from high school, mm -hmm. I, and not being in a public school, mm -hmm. I wanted to uh, continue in a Catholic school. Mm -hmm. So I did go away for two years to a Catholic boarding school in uh, Powhatan, Virginia. And then I came back here and finished the last two years of uh, high school at Fight. I was glad since you lived across from what was then Darden High School, That's you, correct. Know, you never went there. That's right. right. <laughs> I had sisters and brothers, right. but uh, I just never did. Yeah. I, <laughs> now, tell us about yourself, sir. Well, I was I was born and raised in this area too. I was huh? actually born on Washington Street Extension, right across the real one. Right. And that was born well, in the early fifties. Mm -hmm. And I, I went to elementary school. We moved from over there over to Lodge Street. Mm -hmm. I went to Adams School. Started off at Adams School and uh, then moved back over here with Sam Vic mm -hmm. uh, at Elementary School and then ended up at Don. I graduated from Don High School in 1970, mm -hmm. the last graduating classes. Mm -hmm. uh, left there, went to Winston Salem State University, had the best time of my life and ended up back. <laughs> so it was a lot of fun. I actually went to another school, transferred to another school mm -hmm. and everything. But I was just to the point where, at a time where I didn't know what I wanted to do, didn't know where I wanted to go, I just did things. And then I finally moved back to Wilson and everything, and then got married, and had three boys. Mm -hmm. And uh, I worked at Firestone for about 13 years, and that while I was born at Firestone, I went, went, went back to school, I decided to go back to school, mm -hmm. and went back to school to finish up at Bond College. And uh, went from, went from uh, Firestone, to work for a non-profit organization called Wilson Community Improvement mm -hmm. Association. And I worked for about four years, then, then left there and went to Wilson Community College mm -hmm. 
I've worked there for about 17 years. I just recently retired. And at this particular time, I'm a city council member from District 7 at, the, at this time. That's I'm doing a lot of things, learning about how to be a councilman. I uh, learned about the situation. But it's a lot of good history here in, in East Wilson. And especially during the time that, uh, if you want to go back to times, there's some things that I, by going to a, a Dodd High School, mm -hmm. you know, even though we were, it was the last, what we say, segregated mm -hmm. class, they taught us a lot to do a lot with a little nothing mm. with what you have. Because at that particular time, we always had books that were left over from Fight High School that they sent over here. We didn't never had, I never had new books. Never knew what new books were was at that time. But what it is is that we use what we have, and the, and the majority of the individuals that graduated did go on to college because of the motivation that the teachers at that time gave us. Mm -hmm. and, you know, we didn't have a lot, and we wouldn't ex a lot of people didn't expect a lot from us. But we did achieve. It, may it took some of us a little longer than others, mm -hmm. but it's the, the point is it's, it's the end game of what happens. Mm -hmm. And all of the guys that I used to hang with, was about five or about eight of us that hung around who always told us, we will we'll never do anything, we will never have anything, we will never be any, any good because we were part of what kind of a, a, a class system that it had mm -hmm. at that time. Nine out of, of ten of us got degrees. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, uh, see, and the other one got uh, uh, went to the service and, and, uh, and, and he's doing well too. All of us, it says, I can count and say one, two, three, how? They have at least a two-year degree or more. And I think it was about eight of us. Mm -hmm. It was in a group that we all hung around, did all kind of crazy things, and, <laughs> and they were and, and had a lot of fun. But the motivation came to the point that when people told us what we could not do, we all achieved. Right. I, I will tell you about from, from other interviews we've done here in this area in the past few months. I've kind of heard the same thing. You know, people mm -hmm. that you know, you know, back when the schools were you know were segregated. Mm -hmm. Seems like you know there was that drive by the teachers and especially the church too to make mm -hmm. sure that the students did the best mm -hmm. that they could. Mm -hmm. But then it seemed like once the schools became integrated, that system wasn't mm -hmm. there anymore. Mm -hmm. It wasn't. You know. As from what I'm gathering from, <laughs> from individuals is that I don't know if I really can't say to that because I never attended uh, uh, integrated school mm -hmm. until after I went to college. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But from what I've seen in the problems that some of the young people have, have gotten is that they are missing the motivational factor. Mm -hmm. Let them know that nobody's going to give you anything. You have to work hard for it. And if you work hard for it, you do the right things, things are going to work out for you. And, uh, and the guys that's in my group, uh, testimony, because we were poor. Mm -hmm. We didn't have a whole lot. Had four or five brothers and sisters, and most of us uh, that hung around were, were the same way. Saying, uh, but we had a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. We did a lot of crazy things. But the point is, if people, if people knew that all of us got degrees, right. but they didn't expect none mm -hmm. of us to do anything, especially me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I can tell you about that. And at the time, uh, at, but I, at the time, I did not know, did not realize that what we, were, what I was doing, I was learning, mm -hmm. learning the process of what it take, what it took to be successful, mm -hmm. and, and, and to achieve things in life. If you had told me four or five years ago I'd be a city councilman at this particular time, I thought you was crazy. I even had a chance to go to Europe. Mm -hmm. I was in Europe with Dr. Nockery. Uh, went on a trip during, during the uh, semester to uh, Europe, England, Scotland, Wales, Greece. Enjoyed it. But I, everybody that I talked to during that time, that it was, they all had the same goal over there, was that to have a life and live it the best that you can mm -hmm. and, and be be able to support your family and be successful. Mm -hmm. That's what I learned from, from the different cultures that I did right. come in contact with. Mm -hmm. Now as far as East Wilson is concerned, especially with Darden High School, mm -hmm. we have a lot of people that graduate from Darden High School that have achieved even more so, like G.K. Butterfield mm -hmm. and and uh, a couple more individuals, I can't, the uh, name escaped me at this particular time, but we have a lot to be proud of over here because we had less.
I read it, I read it, uh, what a little bit I read it about the unequal status of the Dutch. And we had one of the best bands. Have you heard that? We were Don High Trojans band. We had the raggedest uniforms that you can find, <laughs> but we had the best musicians. Right. We even had, they, they even had a chance to, to, at that time to play at a Cherry Blossom Festival okay. in Washington, D.C. Uh -huh. And I think that was a little bit before my time, but we had uh, we had gone to so many of them. And the band was to the point that we had gone to different competitions mm -hmm. and won, uh, you scored high. But we didn't look like it because of the uniforms, we just didn't have new, new uniforms, we couldn't afford them. But our, our band director, Mr. Uh, Cleveland Flo, yes. he yeah. always taught us mm -hmm. to be the best musician that you can, and we can transition transition from being the best musician if you don't use to be a better citizen. So he taught us all of all that and we were excellent and didn't realize how good we were. Even to the point that all the sparkling bands that came by and played, <laughs> we were always better. <laughs> so that was you having Cleveland Flow, I didn't realize he, he mm -hmm. taught there. I knew he was one of the founding mm -hmm. members of the monitors, mm -hmm. Bill Myers. But oh I yeah, he was our music teacher I didn't for, realize years, that. for years. For okay, years and years really. and years. And he was an outstanding individual that motivated a lot of us mm. and he was tough right <laughs> he didn't take, take any 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 mess out of him. you did not talk back or disrespect him mm. but you loved him and you did what he said do. and every time he said do it and we we always ended up at the top mm. now let me ask both of you since you've been mm. here in this community all these years and I, of course i know after darden high school closed there just mm. wasn't it seemed like that that cohesive unity in the mm -hmm. neighborhood was there anymore because mm -hmm. that was gone. Mm -hmm. You know, how how has this neighborhood changed since that time? You know, looking back early 70s up till now. Mm -hmm. Have things gotten better? Have they gotten worse? Or Well, to me, they have, <clears throat> they have, they, maybe now that I'm older and mature, I just see the, the danger mm -hmm. now. I used to didn't see the danger in the neighborhood and uh, I was just so familiar with seeing my neighbors but now my neighbors are changing mm -hmm. and um, I don't feel as safe mm -hmm. um, here um, than I did say 10, 15 years ago. Um, Today I just realized the police was uh, not next door, but my other neighbor, mm -hmm. two houses down. Mm -hmm. Someone just broke in her house this morning, mm -hmm. and I've been right here all day. Mm -hmm. And I said, now, they, they said they started at that house there, but they skipped these two houses. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if this, because we got uh, alarm systems on, right. and we got no signs out there that they skipped. I said, Lord, if they had to come in here. <laughs> so, but um, it's not as safe. Mm -hmm. I, I, I would like to be able to walk my neighborhood. That's mm -hmm. why I told my husband, mm -hmm. now that he's uh, on this council, right. that uh, we're going to try to do something about making our neighborhood safer. Mm -hmm. You know, because I would like to be able to walk if they do do any redevelopment, I could walk over here to the fight wood. Right. Now I wouldn't want to walk over there to fight wood. It, it, mm -hmm. it's, um, it's, it's just, it's not as safe. What, what, what do you think caused this to happen, especially within this neighborhood? You know, I, I, I'm going to tell you one, to me, mm -hmm. I say is, um, if you ride around in Wilson, mm -hmm. You see a lot of children. When I was growing mm -hmm. up, you did not see children on the street during school hours. Mm -hmm. You know, you would have, a, we had a truancy officer mm -hmm. who would actually pick you up and take you either to your parent or take you back to the school. Now you see children that you know are school age and maybe riding a bicycle up and down the street. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so th those are the things I'm, I'm seeing uh, people out that shouldn't be out. Um, and, and unemployment, I think that has a, a play, it's playing a major role. Um, I worked at social services for 
uh, in Wilson County and in Wake County. And to me, I see it has gotten worse. Mm -hmm. You know, it didn't, even when I was working and making home visits, it, it, it just didn't seem as bad. It seemed like the economy has broken down a lot of families and um, I don't know if that has anything to do with why children are not going to school. Uh, uh, the parents are not uh, monitoring them like they should. And so I, I, that's, that's my opinion as to why we got a breakdown. You know, I drove through here a few hours ago, drove past the school, and I'm just seeing, like, seeing, seeing kids walking out here in the street. I'm looking at watch them, like, that's, why are they out here this time of the right. day? You know, it just kind of, kind of shocked me. That's exactly <laughs> yeah. right. And, and just to piggyback on some of the things that she yeah. has said, uh, is that when we're coming up, mm -hmm. is that the neighbors watched. Mm -hmm. And if you got out of hand, my mama knew about it. Right. Before I got, by the time I got home, because I was one of the individuals who thought I could get away with cutting class, <laughs> and thought that was, so because everybody was working. So uh, I never forget me, uh, so a couple of friends and I, and, and I went uh, left school and went to to my house, which was around the corner on Van Street, because my mother was working, my dad was working and stuff. And I said we could go by there and hang out at my house and everything. Before we can get through, I, my mama had came up. Uh, Got, got wind of it from somebody. I still do not know today who told me. And I still don't have any idea of what it is that she was home. And then she said, didn't I tell you such and such and such? And I, about I had to go back to school. She made sure that we got punished. It was the most embarrassing thing. What we had to do, and i never forget, this was a, 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 a situation where it stayed with me the rest of my life. That she, she said she did not cover for any, uh, anything you knew were wrong, so you're gonna, you're gonna, there are consequences mm -hmm. to what you do. We had to pick up trash in front of everybody. <laughs> and everybody had a chance to stand up and laugh at you because they knew that you had done something mm -hmm. wrong. This was at Don High School. Picking up trash, and we had, uh, 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 it wasn't a sign, but it was a, a little jacket that you wear you knew. Mm -hmm that what it was that you had gotten to the low point. And it was, you could see the heads from the classroom when we walked by the classroom <laughs> where it was, and the heads would come up, and they would all start laughing at us. We never cut class, cut class again. <laughs> and my mother was always, and my father too, my mother always made sure that we went to school. And if we didn't, and it's somebody else's the family that uh, they were out in, in the street where it was, we it was the same way with them. We had a central place in the in the community where we used to go and play basketball. It was Doctor uh, uh, Roseman, uh, Julian Roseman. I don't know if you remember, he was a dentist. Yes, I know that. Remember that? Well, anyway, we used to meet at his house. It, you know, it, all the guys in the group and play, had one of the, the most competitive basketball games you ever did want to see. At the end. Mr. Dr. Rosen would come home. She, he would make sure that we had water and maybe food. But he would say, have you, you guys done your homework? <laughs> and we hadn't, and he could tell when we, were, when we were lying. And he would make sure that we get home and do it. <laughs> and especially when we come to the creek, what about you? <laughs> and, and, and he was a couple of us that he would call out personally on that. And I said, no, Dr. Rosen, I, I, I didn't do my homework. So you know what you need to do. I, Got, it. but this was things that they were instilling in us, mm -hmm. and let us know that this this was a motivation. They, we might not have, sh have shown it at that particular mm -hmm. time, but it was, this was a motivating factor mm -hmm. to all of us and all of the group that was there. And it was there, and it was uh, to uh, Mr. Newman's house, who was the local barber, back to my house, and and and, and playing football in Saint Alphonse's uh, yard, mm -hmm. uh, where it used to be. In the area, there was uh, Mr. Cleveland, Lew uh, Lew Cleveland Lewis, Mr. Lewis, who was one of the uh, teachers in the area. And we had a core of, 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 of adults who kept us. We never talked back. And if you did get smart with them, the rest of the guys would jump on the one who got smart. <laughs> because you didn't, the one thing you did not do was disrespect your elders. You could disagree with them, but you did not disrespect them. 
we have lost that. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, was it a thing of integration or a thing of just parents thinking that everything it was okay, they didn't have to go and take care of the children and give them responsibility. Mm -hmm. When we went out to date, we dressed to out, we tried to outdress each other <laughs> because it was a competition to get the young lady to, to notice us. Mm -hmm. We didn't go to anybody's house dressed any kind of way because if you did, you wouldn't get, you wouldn't, you wouldn't get no further than the front porch. Mm -hmm. If you see the pictures, those pictures of Don High School, you see the guys wearing the ties and the dressed up. So it was because we were trying to get noticed by the ladies. <laughs> today, <laughs> today they do in their dress any kind of way. It's not to a thing. It's not what we felt like we weren't ourselves. This was us because we were trying to be at the top and be the best that we could be, and we cared about how we looked. And we cared about how, how we went to other people's houses mm -hmm. and how we acted. And if we could have, our parents knew about it. So, and, I, and after integration, I don't know, see like it went down here, whether the, other, the parents and, and the neighborhood just, just, just didn't have this cohesiveness mm -hmm. that we, were, we were had, to, we, could, we, we had nobody else to take care of it. Mm -hmm. we, we were the ones that could do it. And they did it. My grandparents. My grandfather, I just barely remember my grandfather. Uh, about five, he died when I was about five, five or six years old. But he would always say, "You do the very best you can on everything that you do." And I didn't know what he was talking about then. I thought it was just because I eat all the food that you can right. get you know, at the time. But uh, I do understand now. And he was one of the. Uh, he was a, 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 a teacher from Smithfield. That he, that he and he actually got well back there during that time. I think he got a degree, uh, a, a high school degree, in 1930s, mm -hmm. in 1930s, which is unheard of for African American mm -hmm. families mm -hmm. and everything. So he was and, and he originally, and he actually, what little I remember of him, spread these things about what he had learned about education mm -hmm. through the family, and we in turn had other families. Those that, that was intent on making sure that we stayed on the right track, we didn't get in, in, in trouble, and they, and we appreciate We might not have showed it at the time. Mm -hmm. We just say, oh, little more nosy folks looking at us and everything, mm -hmm. but we understood because that was motivating mm -hmm. us to do better. And that's why all the guys that hung with us got degrees. Right. <laughs> and they'll tell you that too, like, it, it's been, and it was a lot of fun that we did have. But it's miss, what's missing now is the respect the dignity that we had, even though we didn't have a lot. Mm -hmm. And thinking that if integration was going to solve all our problems and we could leave it as it was, and somebody else was going to take care of it, care of it, we lost that. We have to learn that we have to take care of it ourselves. I believe, firmly believe, that it's our responsibility to take care of our community. We want just the equal. We don't want anybody to give us anything. Mm -hmm. But we want what what we uh, what we deserve as part of the community, mm -hmm. and that was one of the reasons why I got back and got into politics. Mm -hmm. I said maybe I could do something to bring some cohesiveness back, to bring some some things to our community that we used to that was really good for us, yeah. understanding what we what we were about, where we were going, and understand that there's respect and dignity. And character meant something. And that you said you was going to do it, you, you, need, to, you know, need to go through it and do it. That's what my grandfather used to say, that was my, my mother used to say, now you said you was going to do it, now you need to do it. Right. <laughs> you know, and especially and the, the pillar of the community was church. That's one thing I was going to ask. <laughs> In previous interviews, people tell us, okay, you know, we had people at school, so the <laughs> church held it all together. Church held it all Mom, my grand, my, I didn't care when I was in high school. She did not care. My mother did not care what time we came in. <laughs> Sunday morning, you were in Sunday school. I remember time I was gonna be big and bad. Three or four o'clock in the morning, I came in three or four o'clock in the morning. I've been with the guys, hung out with the guys at three o'clock in the morning in the twelfth grade. I never did it anymore after that. She made sure that we were up. 
And I, that was one of the toughest days that I had, I have had brought up. <laughs> and make sure that we understood that we need to be in church and we're going to be there regardless of what time you came in. And unbeknownst to me at that particular time was that she was teaching us responsibility. Mm -hmm. Understanding that you have to have a faith. Mm -hmm. That that made you stronger. So whatever you were going to, going to go through in the rest of your life is that you were able to make it without having to go off in another tangent or even going to do something that was illegal. I don't think any of the guys that we hung around the group ever had any, we don't have a records. We've had some runs, <laughs> so, you know, anything, but uh, it was nothing really serious. Mm -hmm. And we knew how far to go mm -hmm. because we knew that if we did, we were going to catch it at home. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether when integration came in and that, that uh, all this stuff just just melted away, and mm -hmm. and 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 all of us. And I'm I'm really concerned, mm -hmm. really concerned about what's going on, especially the part of being proud of who you are and understanding that your first impression is the only way that you're gonna make a mm -hmm. good impression. Right. And I I worked with young people for about thirty years. I was mm -hmm. uh, I worked with young men and try to uh, get them to understand that when you go to a job or something like that, you need to, to look the best that you can. But even with that, some of them get jobs, even, you know, doesn't make a difference how they look. But if you're going to continue to go and do other things, you have to have pride in yourself. You know, this one thing, you know, other interviews with people, mm -hmm. kind of notice, you know, once once the, you know, the school closed down, you're mm -hmm. in high school, you didn't mm -hmm. have that anymore. And, Mm -hmm. You know, when integration businesses started to disappear, mm -hmm. and of course, I know you see it when you drive down 301 over here, mm -hmm. especially look over at Fikewood, you mm -hmm. know, and just don't mm -hmm. see anything anymore. Mm -hmm. And I, I know over the past few years, like it's been going on for years, a fight to try to get this area, you know, mm -hmm. redeveloped over there, but mm -hmm. everything seems like it's moving to the western yes. end of the city. Mm -hmm. You know, what? Mm -hmm. And it's really a shame it's that we not have encouraging. No. Right. It's not encouraging even to our young people. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why I was wondering. It's a breakdown, too, mm -hmm. in our school system because I believe, too, the school system is missing something. Mm -hmm. They're not capturing the children like they used mm -hmm. to and making it, uh, 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 you know, you be... My daughter, my daughter mm -hmm. reminded me uh, that, you know, when she was young, and, and during school time, how they were anxious to go to school mm -hmm. versus my grandson now. I got a grandson mm -hmm. at five, whereas he's not. He's just trying to just hurry up and get out. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. school's supposed to be fun. Learning should be a fun thing. But evidently, right. uh, we're missing that. Too. And I, I just, I know they're doing these charter schools, and I don't know if that's helping mm -hmm. um, to recapture some of the things that the school is, is missing out on. Just like almost back in the days, you know, when, when you know, when schools segregated, you know, they were, you know, I guess trying to make sure all the mm -hmm. students would do the best that they could, mm -hmm. you know, because this is all that you had. Mm -hmm. and, you know, once, you know, whether it was forced or voluntary, once mm -hmm. integration happened, it seemed like, mm -hmm. it seemed like kind of just fell through the cracks mm -hmm. and there wasn't that push anymore mm -hmm. to do it. I do. I That's do. right. I do, I do believe that. Mm -hmm. And I believe that makes a lot, it's a lot of probably mm -hmm. uh, depressed children mm -hmm. walking around here. Mm -hmm. um, confused and not knowing what to do. They don't have a lot of mentoring. Mm -hmm. They don't have a lot of activities even at the school. Mm -hmm. I just had a grandson to move back here from uh, uh, Illinois. He was in Asheville, then he went to Illinois. And he was just expressing to me, it's no way to meet people here. Mm -hmm. It's no way to connect. No people. Right. Yes. Uh, and so he gets, he works at Taco Bell and, and, and goes to Durham, that's where he graduated from high school mm -hmm. in Durham. He's familiar there versus he was just coming visiting me, but now he's living here. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what to tell him to do um, because 
I don't know if the safe places to tell him to go to. You know, kind of connect. So. I guess years ago when y'all were growing up here, you know, you had all the businesses, I guess, that used, mm -hmm. used to be here at that time. Mm -hmm. and that was probably a way for people to try to connect mm -hmm. and stuff. And, and, then, sorry. and then again, yeah. you know, you, during that time, we made our own, what we say, uh, entertainment. Right. Right. That's mm -hmm. right. We did our own entertainment right. and stuff like that. We got together so that like maybe somebody might have had a record player or something mm -hmm. of that nature. That's right. And, and we had somebody had a TV, be 20 of us in, there, in one in the house looking at TV. Mm -hmm. That's right. Especially at the time when glow trotters came on, that was a big thing <laughs> in that nature. But with all the technology and stuff going mm -hmm. on now, and so many things that they they can do besides read and really do mm -hmm. some things. That, and see, what a grandson, uh, grandson, we were talking about is that uh, we're trying to get him to go to school mm -hmm. because he's a smart young man and everything. So he's, I guess, he had to do some traveling and get around and see some things because you know I did the same thing. Mm -hmm. But I went, to, went every time I went somewhere, I went to school. Mm -hmm. Took at least a class, <laughs> so I went to several places till I moved back to Wilson. Mm -hmm. And uh, but I, I I see these things and I am really really worried mm -hmm. about uh, this generation. Mm -hmm. Now uh, about some of the history, uh, the the guy that was the truant officer, what was his name, Mr. Um, well, because I didn't go to y'all's public school. <laughs> his name was on my on my on my on my, on my talk, I can't remember. But that goes to the point. Get back with yeah. the point of, of being in school, and I cannot take his name. In fact, he's living right over here. Uh, Mr. Metz. Not Missy. No, uh, it was before that. Uh, oh, okay. I, well, I can't take. I'll take it later on. But anyway, is that when you saw him mm -hmm. and everything, and if you were not supposed to be somewhere. And everything like that, you knew you were in trouble. You did, and he told you to get in the car. You wouldn't say, "I ain't getting in the car with you." Yeah, now <laughs> that I was unheard know. of. And he would bring you sometimes to the classroom. So mm -hmm. where you supposed to be at? What class? What school you supposed to be at? And he would bring them to the school. I seen some of my friends, <laughs> and bring you to the classroom and sit you down in the classroom. Man, and you did not say anything yeah. back. Yeah, I don't know what's um. What's gonna change that? Mm -hmm. oh, no, they don't have the truant officers anymore. That's either. right. Yeah. They're the officers. <laughs> now they now they're getting this uh, after school program. Uh, Dr. Bell has told us about mm -hmm. how the school system is gonna be sending them over there to Adams School. Mm -hmm. um, and see, and we didn't have that mm -hmm. when we were in school. Um, and I don't know if uh, if education. Maybe they stress education more to us and we were more challenged to to want to do mm -hmm. and with the young men I, I i blame sometimes the girls for not telling the boys because we did tell the boys mm -hmm. hey you don't we ain't talking to you looking like this mm -hmm. Don't come here it's like this. Mm -hmm. And if a young man was to come with his pants down to me now, mm -hmm. I, I, I would. These <laughs> girls need to tell them, pull your pants up, though I'm not going to talk mm -hmm. to you. But see, right. what I'm mean, hearing, so many girls those. are doing the same thing. Yeah, they, and I do not understand that. And she is correct. Mm -hmm. and like, like if you didn't have that, uh, that, that, that good looking fly look and all that right. stuff. There's stuff like we did, and I didn't have the clothes a lot of other guys did. I had to get by with personalities. <laughs> <laughs> but the point is, is that it was like, it was a fun thing. My high school, my last two years of high school was wonderful. I didn't, I could have studied more. <laughs> I could have done much more. I could have made better grades. But it's because of some of the things that, that how we, I couldn't wait to get to school. It was fun to go. It was right. fun to go. It was right. fun to learn. That's why I'm wondering what they the doing. And then if you got in a fight with somebody, hmm. it used to be like this. I get in a fight with somebody, next week we were buddies. That's right. We have gotten to the point with this gun thing hmm. that they, you don't have a chance to be buddies anymore because they're looking to kill you. Hmm. That's right. That's all of this came about afterwards. Right. I seen times. They don't, they don't care. They, they don't, don't seem um, to understand the importance no of life. I can say they're depressed, right? Uh -huh. And they don't care. And they don't care whether you're an adult <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, uh, or what. 
because I had a little run in with, with, with my son and stuff like that. And, and this girl who was the sister of, of his girlfriend, I mean, she came up there and, 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 and wasn't even her business. You want to curse me out? Because telling him that he can do what he want to do. Then she, later on she did apologize. Mm -hmm. Because she did, she found out who I was, really. So. <laughs> but it's still to point that if you're an adult, mm -hmm. you still can disagree, but you, you have to be respectful with it. Mm -hmm. Oh, anybody, if, for that mm -hmm. matter. It's to the point they have no idea what it means. Sounds like uh, you all were talking about you had a sense of hope. Mm -hmm. Had a sense of though, hope that you know that if you do you this and you get a degree, you're gonna you're gonna be successful. You're gonna have the things that you want. Right. If you learn, uh, 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 especially learning about getting along with other people. Right. You can fight with somebody and stuff like that and be friends next next week. Nowadays, you get in a fight at school to call the police. That's yes, what call the police. <laughs> That's right. And that was unheard of over here. Cause and we did we we figured that look we had bullets. But to the bullets, to the point that uh, we, if they got too bad with, with, with some individuals, we would stand up to the bullets. Hmm. And then they would back off. Yeah, and some people use the excuse that they don't have, you know. They used to say we were privileged, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. I, I, my mama and daddy, my father came from Stansburg, mm -hmm. where his father farmed. Mm -hmm. And my daddy was determined that he wasn't going to farm. And he didn't get a whole bunch of formal education, mm -hmm. but he worked hard enough to start his own business. He started at a funeral home, mm -hmm. and he learned until he learned how to make a burial vault. Mm -hmm. And got his first mold, and he started back in 58, mm -hmm. and he worked hard digging graves where he would have to light the ground mm -hmm. to soften the dirt. And so I know, I, I mean, listening to him and listening to my mother do housework, you know, mm -hmm. uh, to help along, to, 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 to get us to be able to be a, uh, able to go to whatever school mm -hmm. we wanted to, yeah. to get whatever education we wanted mm -hmm. to. So I know what it was to work hard. So being poor and not having if you work hard, I believe you can get ahead. Oh yeah, and that's what we believe. <laughs> so I was a little bit under, a little bit even lower on on the scale than they were. Mm -hmm. And uh, during that time, is that my mother, and my father, my fa my mother was, was worked in the tobacco factory mm -hmm. for forty seven years with tobacco. My father was a, a chauffeur for one of the uh, uh, big lawyers and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, Fred Carr, I know you Fred Carr, he, he was the founder of the, uh, B B his family was the founder of BB&T. Oh, okay. Right. Okay. And he worked for, for them for about 40 years. But you know what? I, I, a lot of things that I have learned were, were called, my daddy bought books home mm -hmm. from Mr. Carr's that were old to him. Mm -hmm. And we used to get upstairs in our house and read them. Mm -hmm. And some of the stuff that we read that, that that actually motivated us, even though we didn't know Dad would bring the books home. We said that was you know we didn't know what they said. You read these books, and maybe you can learn something. <laughs> and the books were, were, were at the time we, that was out of uh, out of print or whatever like that. But we learned from these books. And my mama was the one that really made sure that we went to school. We didn't have the fancy clothes. We didn't have. Uh, uh, this or that, mm -hmm. whatever. That, but we had, we, we it was pretty much clean mm -hmm. that we went, because my mama had when she, whenever she could, she washed the clothes, and if we didn't, stuff like that, uh, we had to wait till we got, you know. And it was, I had four brothers. Actually, I had an uncle that was considered a brother who my mother raised mm -hmm. in the house, and I had my oldest brother, and I had two, two or three, other, and all of us got degrees. Except for my youngest brother, who's in real estate and make more money than most all of us. <laughs> so, but it was the hope that you're talking about that that not only my parents but a lot of parents in this community instill in a lot of us that if you do these certain things, then you can achieve no matter what. Of course, they're going to be racism. We understand that. 
The point is, is that you don't have to let racism beat you. And the vehicle for that was education. The, the vehicle for that was education. That we all knew. And it's like her father had a business. Mm -hmm. But her father taught her and taught the rest of her family about the importance of if you're going to own a business, you have to work hard. Nobody's going to give you anything. Yeah. Point is that now they would think that somebody's supposed to give you, yeah, they, that we own something. Right. And they understand that if somebody gives you a job, you learn all you can about that job. You don't complain about the money if you don't have any education. You learn what you can and then go from there. They don't want to do that. We learn. I used to cut grass on Saturdays. Every, I went to Barker's department store in the evening time and, and I worked on the weekends. I cut grass. And believe it or not, Barker's department it taught me about how to, what retail was. Mm -hmm. and, everything. and I didn't make, I think I made about $2 an hour mm -hmm. at the most. But it was a lot of money to me. Right. A lot of money to me. And I worked there for about two summers mm -hmm. in a row. And uh, and cut grass and we and then I had I, I would go up here on Kincaid Avenue to cut grass. Mm -hmm. And I never get that couple. They would take my lawnmower and cut their own grass. <laughs> yes. Cut their own grass, fix up everything, bring me something to eat, and still pay me. <laughs> <laughs> But that was a motivating thing that, it, that all people over there are not bad. Mm -hmm. And I used to go to, and I still cannot uh, think of the name at the time, it was so, so long ago, and I know they're long, long ago. But they would do that every time I would cut that grass. Oh. <laughs> and it was fantastic. And I, and I go and cut other, other people in the neighborhood grasses and make a little money and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And, we had, and all of them treated me decent. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's because I worked hard, and when they saw me working hard, they made sure that I was comfortable. <laughs> so that was a motivating mm -hmm. factor. So, and I learned how to take care of the lawnmower. My daddy believed in that. I was in 12th grade. 11, it was 10th, 11th, and 12th grade. I did all that and everything. So, and that's what. But today, oh gosh, they think that you're supposed to give them something. That, and, I, and I do not understand this, this, this attitude that they do have. They have an attitude that time. Not all of them. Because we do have some great young people mm -hmm. that have gone on and, and have been motivated and done some really good things. And are doing some really good things. I'm just worried about the ones that are walking the streets, you know, like I said, and the way they're dressed. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and I guess, it's, you know, they can't say anything about the tattoos or anything like that. I don't know. I just, <laughs> you know, I, but I've gotten people that I work with that own businesses and say they would not hire anybody to have a tattoo mm -hmm. and stuff like that. A lot of you guys don't understand that at all, and then they wonder why they can't get a job. Right. And then I, I, I had I work with young people, mm -hmm. and and to understand that uh, when we came up, we took whatever job that we can get. We didn't have no uh, a McDonald's, we didn't have a Hardee's. But you talk about tell the guys now, there's nothing wrong with flipping burgers until you can do better. Not me. Mm -hmm. No, not me. I'm not flipping, flipping no bur no burgers. That was unheard. I I cropped the back. Remember. You ever heard of a crop and tobacco? Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, crop and tobacco. I cropped the tobacco several times, and that would motivate me too. I said, "It's so hard. I'm not gonna do this anymore." Right, exactly. <laughs> it was so hard. I'm not until you try. Right. right. You know, so I said, "I gotta go back to school. I have got to go back to school because I was not gonna do this the rest of my life." And uh, but you, the guys there, the, 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 some of the guys that they work with, and you, and you try to show them exactly what it takes. And you do what it takes, as long mm -hmm. as it's legal, mm -hmm. positive things. It's legal, not illegal. And I tell the guys, I say, man, you don't, you tell me, and the guys used to tell me, say, we do whatever, we'll do whatever it takes mm -hmm. to survive. I said, you do whatever it takes as long as it's legal. But if you get caught and try to do something, that's not surviving. Mm -hmm. Right. So, well, how, do you, how do you think yeah. we've lost, and, and young people have lost this um, belief that, uh, I mean, there's, Again, I keep thinking about mm -hmm. hope. Um, you know, you can work tobacco, you can flip burgers. If you think that somewhere down the line there's going to be something better, mm -hmm. but it seems like young people don't believe that. Mm -hmm. That that is a dead end. Yeah. And isn't it ironic, kind of, that uh, integration mm -hmm. came first in the schools, mm -hmm. and yet you know, here we are bemoaning. The loss of this understanding of the importance mm -hmm. of education. You can't convince young people. Mm -hmm. What happened? 
And I don't know the answer. But, I, I, um, I really don't know the answer. Either. And, and you might mm -hmm. even say we didn't really, mm -hmm. we didn't really integrate. We mm -hmm. sent everybody to the same school, mm -hmm. but then maybe something was lost. Mm -hmm. Maybe the I, white power structure wasn't really ready to accept. And, and I, I believe that to the point that uh, you know, that, as you know, the integration after the, the last integrated class, they had so many problems over in the schools. Mm -hmm. In the early 70s, when the, in the first few years, and and, and, and and actually created an atmosphere of mistrust, and and then the parents are not a part of it because it, a, a lot of injustices were done mm -hmm. at a particular time, and a lot of parents at the time said it's nothing we can do about it. Uh -huh. They're gonna treat us any kind of way anyway. Uh -huh. That may be a part of it. And see, nobody have, nobody looked looked at it like that because. Mm -hmm. That's the school point. system actually gave more punishment to minority children mm -hmm. than they did, did the white children for the same offense. Right. And if the parent was trying to do something in, to, to protect the child, they were probably, I know some for a fact they were disrespected. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Yeah, because I, I, me coming from a uh, Catholic boarding school mm -hmm. when I went to fight, I was definitely not accepted. I wasn't, I had, I didn't know that about racism. I didn't know, I didn't realize it was such a separation because I left here and the nuns I was used to dealing with, white priests and our nuns, they were black here. But when I went to the boarding school, all the people that took care of us, all the nuns mm -hmm. and the priests, I did get a chance to have a, see a black priest because we I didn't see a black priest mm -hmm. growing up here. And in, in the boarding school, we had white nuns. So the nuns was teaching us in the classroom. So when I came here to fight, it mm -hmm. was like I was really academically more advanced going into the 11th grade mm -hmm. than uh, than the students there. And with me getting in an academic program, mm -hmm. I couldn't believe that the teachers, the adults, mm -hmm. allowed students to treat other students mm -hmm. bad. Mm -hmm. that, that, that hurt me more than the students to see an adult, because most I was used to adults discipline others when they were wrong, mm -hmm. and to see that not happening right. while I was in school, oh, that was, that was, uh, and, and then I ended up working. <laughs> I ended up working with some of these same people mm -hmm. when I went to social services. Mm -hmm. I, when I was out, uh, when I first came back and was able to, my parents were strict. We couldn't go to certain places. But I remember going to the bus station, and the bus station had one side for blacks and one side for whites. And nobody was in there but me and a couple of girls, my sister and another girl. And the lady asked us, to go on the other side. And she was just, was ugly to us. Anyway, when I graduated from college, I ended up having to share an office with that same lady. Did she remember you? <laughs> I told her, yeah. <laughs> That's right, I helped her out because she was getting old in there. And, um, but yeah, we had laughs about, hmm. you know, and just how bad it really, how people could treat, mm -hmm. you know, when you don't know a person, right. you, 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 you treat them just because of the color of their skin. Sure, some people that I wouldn't associate with in my own race, mm -hmm. I may shun. But it's because it's something about their character, not because of the color of their skin. And that I had to learn 
um, and um, going, getting into the public school because right. I didn't, that was something I really didn't know. Now, what year was it that you graduated from? Yes, from 69. 69. Mm -hmm. um, now, were we, were we part of a group that voluntarily went to Fike? Yeah, I was okay. one of them volunteers. That's right. Because I know there's a, a couple of people we've interviewed uh, this past month who actually were at Fike about 68, 69 also. That's right. And, you know, and I know going back through, That's right. I went back and actually researched through some of the old Fike high school yearbooks mm -hmm. in the right. past few weeks. and. I literally would see a progression, I think it was about 67, I believe, and there was only just like maybe four or five black wow. students. That's from right, because I, I started in 67. And I probably saw you in that book because <laughs> I knew there were some groups. That, That's right. There were some that seemed like, a lot of, some of the students seemed like they gra gravitated towards the French teacher. I don't know if you were in, in any of those classes or not. Um, going to the French club because I know the the French teacher I think was, I think the only black teacher at the school. Yeah, I was at that in the time. math club. Right, okay. But I just I just noticed the progression yeah. each year a yeah, little bit more. Yeah, it got a little more. How how was that when you when you first went there? I mean, how what was it the was, environment? It, it, well, really, yeah. it was uh, like I said, it was a learning experience mm. for me because mm. like I was I'm, I was not used to that. Mm. I even went to Saint Teresa's Catholic Church mm. and was worshiping with whites, so it wasn't like. And then I never felt inferior mm -hmm. I, and so or intimidated mm -hmm. um, I was sharing with my husband you know during the time that Martin Luther King got killed mm -hmm. I was there during that time mm -hmm. and I remember and I was telling him how they brought guns how the uh, I don't know if the governor or the mayor here who had them to come into Wilson mm -hmm and they felt a need to monitor our halls. Mm -hmm. And I was telling Derek, he said they were protecting the blacks. And I would say, oh no, they were protecting <laughs> <laughs> they were. The reason why I said it was because they were, they were in the, in, in much in the minority mm -hmm. from, from the population that they were at, at there. And then they were enforcing the laws of mm -hmm. integration. Right. But at the same time, you know, there was a lot of people who wanted to do absolute harm. Mm -hmm. And it was more of the whites at that particular time who wanted to do harm mm -hmm. than the blacks. So the, the, it, was, it was there to protect, to keep them apart. But actually, to protect them, to make sure that their rights was not. And I'm thinking right. they their fear. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you think. Now, and I and I told I said I said you are completely in the wrong in the wrong because you're not thinking the right in the right place. But just think about it. I said, just think about it. Look how many white people in there. That's true. Like, you think you they were protecting y'all from from. <laughs> But uh, I just didn't have fear. I didn't, uh, <laughs> now see, mine was my my, my my situation was totally different. Mm -hmm. It didn't hurt us. <laughs> I, I actually uh, I started realizing about uh, racism when I was about five six years old. Mm -hmm. It was a uh, during the time I don't know. Did I say anything about my, my donuts? Why I love donuts? I told her why I I love donuts. My donuts man, <laughs> and you probably can tell. Me <laughs> but during the time I was about five or six years mm -hmm. old. And I went to the donut shop. The donut shop at that particular time, where Wilson Donut Shop is, mm -hmm. it was up a little further up there where the uh, Employment Security Commission okay. was, before they built that bridge and all that kind mm -hmm. of stuff on it. Mm -hmm. So I went into uh, my, me, my brother, and my daddy went into the donut shop. And they said, uh, they stopped us at the door and said, Stop, we don't serve niggas in here. Mm -hmm. That stuck with me. So they told me, Get out and go around. Mm -hmm. All right, so we got out, we, we went, went around. And it was a little slit in the in the wall where they, you put your money in, and they they put the donuts through. And there was a big garbage can here, mm. huge garbage can, nothing but garbage all around. And my dad said, "No, we're not gonna we're not gonna eat anything of this nature. We're not gonna do this. Mm. We're going home." And I wanted them donuts so bad. I used it as a motivating factor. Mm. That when I get old, nobody's ever going to tell me that I can't eat what donuts I want to eat mm -hmm. because of that incident mm -hmm. and everything. A lot of people may look at it in, in another way to, to, to have harbor bad feelings. Mm -hmm. 
I we looked at it as a way of saying we're going to do better and be the very best that we can because things are going to change if we get education and we do do the right thing we're going to be there. And it was a horrible thing to go through to even be going through that situation for a five look, look five year old child. Oh yeah, I couldn't imagine. <laughs> I saw that night because I wanted them donuts so bad. <laughs> so, but it was a thing when I said I was really going to do better. I said, this was something that stuck with me the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. But not in the point of being negative, but as a positive thing mm -hmm. that I have learned. Yeah, they, they, all people are not like it, especially, mm -hmm. and what really got me was what I told you about when, when I went to cut grass mm -hmm. and I took care of me. Mm -hmm. That was a, that kind of balanced it out anyway. So <laughs> that was working out. But those things that we had See, about racism, it was a status quo, because my grandmother was living at the time. Well, we had to go to the hospital. The hospital was down here on, on Pine Street. Not, not Mercy Hospital. Not Mercy, okay. It was on, it was, it was, it was, it was Pine Street? Uh, Douglas Street. Douglas Street. Uh, no, no, it wasn't Douglas Street. No, no, it was a little further up. It was a street that runs, uh, like you're going out toward, uh, like going toward Parkwood. Yeah, but it, but it wasn't Mercy. It wasn't Mercy. It wasn't mercy. Not Mercy. Mm -hmm. You know, we had Mercy Hospital mm -hmm. there. But, it was, but we couldn't go in the front. We had to go in the back. We mm -hmm. had a Mercy one time. That we had to take her up there. And she, we were taking her in the front, but my grandmother would not go in the front mm -hmm. because she had, had been acclimated to, to understand that we do not do certain things. Mm -hmm. But we went all the way to the back. But this this white nurse came all the way back to the back and said, no, y'all come on up here mm -hmm. and get waited on. And we were so scared because mm -hmm. we were going against them. This white nurse told us to come up and waited on us just like we were anything in, in, in else. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? That's what made it feel good. But it was a feeling of being scared that somebody was gonna come and beat us up because mm -hmm. we were because it was a status quo that you did not step out of somewhere. And we was wondering why. Where my grandma said, "Now y'all just make sure y'all be quiet and don't say nothing and everything, and, and nobody's gonna bother us. And we, uh, even though the lady bought us up front, y'all just be quiet." I was scared to death. <laughs> Didn't know what to expect because this was a a a, a where the racism was a form of actually control, mm -hmm. you know, and everything. Yeah. But even though my, my grandmama was used to that, she used to always tell her that you're just as good. There's a lot of people who may have to do certain things because certain things was done in order for them to survive. Right. And, and everything. And, and, and they used that to do better and for all of us in our family. Well, some people might have might, might looked at it and say, and took it and then harbor <coughs> some hatred or something like that. We didn't harbor hatred. <coughs> well, at least most of us didn't. We had an understanding of what it was and we hated what had happened. But it's not. Anything that we were going to stick with us to hold us back. Today, let, let some of the kids holler about racism. They think that's us. Well, they don't, they're not going to let us do this. They're not going to let us. I said, you guys don't even understand what it is to not be let do anything. Mm -hmm. See, that's the problem that they think that, uh, and it's not so much as who's not going to let us, it's because they're not trying and not using it as a motivating factor. That could be cut because something has happened to them and it, cut, it stopped them from doing certain things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they think that it's over with. Where we use it as a motivating factor to do better. And you just kept pushing and pushing until you got there. That's right? exactly right. right. Kept pushing no matter what. And all of us was the same way. A lot of people, uh, see, I, I, I think about these things because a lot of people don't think that it was like that. But it was. And, and when we got to our instructors, talking about 67, 68, and 69. Why they were over there, and the reason why they go to fight because my mother would let us go because we didn't have the clothes. Mm -hmm. We were afraid to go over there because we didn't have the clothes to wear, mm -hmm. and to be over there and like that because we wouldn't. Even though we we probably did, but my mom, my grandma my mama said no, and then I was in the band and stuff over here, and I like what we were doing over there pretty much. But we learned that from my instructors and teachers how to take care of ourselves. What it meant to 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 love anyone, mm -hmm. especially with Martin. So I was a, one of the guys that were running the street when Martin Luther King got killed. Mm -hmm. When they had soldiers mm -hmm. in the neighborhood, riding in the neighborhood, and we were out, but it was a sort of frustration that came to the head with the with killing the Martin Luther right. King. It was a source of frustration. We had to let our frustration out. 
But the, 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 the guys that we hung around, we didn't do nothing but just, we were just to find the soldiers. We didn't <coughs> tear anything up, we didn't fight anybody, we were just out running in the street. The ones that tried, to, that did the tearing up or whatever like they did, we got on them because you were tearing up your own community. Right. You did not go across the uh, uh, railroad track. Nobody went across the railroad track to up anything. But it was downtown, and we got on these guys. So y'all guys, was, what are you doing? This is no way that, that we're gonna we're gonna honor my old king by tearing up all neighborhood. What good is it gonna do? So that actually, the guys that we hold around, we said we're gonna do better, and we're not gonna do anything, but we're gonna try to do get our degrees, and maybe we can make a difference. That's why we used it. Now we have lost that. And some of the guys just say, any, any little thing that happens to them, they use it as an excuse of not doing anything, not being more successful. And one, one thing about about all this, you know, mm -hmm. it, 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 it's talking about, you know, some kids thinking, well, I'm not going to do this, you, know, mm -hmm. you need to give this to me, I deserve it. Mm -hmm. They don't, all the, you know, the racism and mm -hmm. stuff you're talking about. It's not mm -hmm. that long ago. Mm -hmm. That's not long ago. I mean, I, mm -hmm. I myself, I was born in '75, so that was mm -hmm. just a few years before I was born. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, I never really got to see any of that when I when I grew mm -hmm. up, obviously. But mm -hmm. these kids think that's ancient history, and it's mm -hmm. just not that long ago. That's right. You know? Oh, tell me about it. Yeah, my son. My grand, I got a grandson mm -hmm. that don't think that way. Mm -hmm. he, he sees it. His he sees if like with me, I may say something and. He says that I'm seeing color because he's not seeing color. Mm -hmm. And he's 23 years mm -hmm. old. Mm -hmm. And so um, it just depends. I say, I don't know where uh, some need an excuse. Right. I think people, some use it, use it as an excuse. Mm -hmm. um, sure, it's some people that's going to treat you different. Regardless, I, I, I don't care. Um, mm -hmm. But are you saying that he, he doesn't uh, doesn't see it as racism when you can see that it is? That's right. Isn't yeah. that interesting? That's mm -hmm. And yet so you sad. knew. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's it was, right. It was clear. It was clear. I wish he clear. was here. Mm -hmm. cause he and you all responded to that by saying, all right, we're going we're gonna to make it better mm -hmm. instead, of, mm -hmm. instead of giving up. Mm -hmm. that's and yet he can't mm -hmm. name it, he can't see it. See. Mm -hmm. I think that's um, equally true in the mm -hmm. white community, but you know, because of shame and embarrassment mm -hmm. and, and who knows what else, but uh, denial. Mm -hmm. Denial that there is racism mm -hmm. in the air we yeah. breathe and we're born mm -hmm. into it. Mm -hmm. um, I, it's almost like once the signs come down, mm -hmm. You know, in the in the bus station up there, That's right. um, we don't look beneath the surface and see it. But what I'm, what's really interesting to me is that uh, I don't know. I'm kind of making a leap, thinking about. I'm still on this idea of what happened to the hope. And if you can't name it and see it for what it is, how can you attack it? Attack. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. You know, mm -hmm. I mean that is that's one of our purposes in this project. I think mm -hmm. is getting. Is not denying our history, even the ugly part, mm -hmm. even our responsibility by failing to act mm -hmm. in places in our own past and failing to act today. Mm -hmm. um, but if we don't talk about it and name it, we don't know what we're fighting. Right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Well, have you all spoken to younger people, like in their twenties, like? Some that's just like coming out of school mm -hmm. to to see what it is that they feel like is missing. Because yeah. I believe that it's mm -hmm. just got to be something missing. Yeah, most people I, we've spoken to are either your generation or mm -hmm. your parents' generation. Yeah, you know? yeah. Okay. We've now, I had to. a class last mm -hmm. semester at the college mm -hmm. of freshmen mm -hmm. um, in white supremacy. We were studying, mm -hmm. um, you know. The, what a civil rights history course, but it was kind of in, in, there was a little bit of history to understand context, but it was more exploring the white supremacy that still exists and that we grow up. You know, we're we're like 
fish swimming in the water of white mm -hmm. supremacy. The fish doesn't know it's in the water and yet mm -hmm. it's all around. You yes. can't help but being affected by it. And, um, you know, it, it, it bothered me um, when we talked about the Confederate flag, mm -hmm. right? And that some black students, young boys and young girls would say, um, Mom, isn't that a big deal? It's just a flag. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's like, well, let's unpack the history of that. Why are they flying that flag? The Civil War is over. Why are they holding that flag up? Why are they putting it on the car? But they, they didn't know that mm -hmm. history of that symbol mm -hmm. and that it meant oppression and murder. Mm -hmm. They didn't know that. And they didn't want to hear it. And and that's one of the things that I had talked to them about understanding the past. They, mm -hmm. they have not grasped the past. And that's mainly our fault for not uh, getting them to mm -hmm. understand that that uh, if you forget your past, you, you're doomed to repeat it. And not understanding that certain things that was a sign of oppression. Mm -hmm. And I, they had a big thing when they was in school with, with the Confederate flag. Oh, yeah. I bet you, bet your grandson don't know anything yes, about that. See, and we, we had to endure every Friday at pep rally time mm -hmm. <laughs> the old Dixie song. And I heard the colors that fight there, what somebody told you, blue and gray. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, and, but yeah. what it is that what, what we did. Welcome. When we saw the flags though that we you know we didn't do it, we used it, I said we they used to tell us that you see how they still trying to throw this at us? Mm -hmm. now, the best thing that you can do is get an education. Mm -hmm. So you can make sure that, that what has happened in the past won't happen again mm -hmm. because you know what it's all about and you're able to teach other people mm -hmm. what it's all about. Now I went with these young guys and, and I did, I run into my own son, mm -hmm. whose best friend is is, is white. Mm -hmm. Good, good guy, love him to death. But they still do not understand. They understand racism is there. Mm -hmm. They understand that they did say that. And some people, cause they, they, they look at the TV sometimes and they all oh, this guy's a racist or what racist or something like that. They understand that. But as far as being around here in this particular area, because they come and go as, as they please, mm -hmm. he goes to his, uh, over to his house and they, he comes over here or whatever like that. And he's a good guy, great guy, I love him. But they have forgotten what the problem was. Mm -hmm. yeah. And and there's a lot of people that have gone undercover with it mm -hmm. that are right here in the system mm -hmm. that are, are, are there to, to keep this oppression going. Mm -hmm. We can recognize it because we have seen it. They cannot. Yeah. Well, you know, it's you don't like, go teach your children. Right. My mama and daddy didn't teach me, uh, any of us growing up, that uh, somebody was going to treat us different. Hmm. So, you know, um, how, how do you tell you? Like I, with Eric, oh. I, I, didn't, I don't tell him, well, Eric, you need to watch out because, you know, your friend Chris, he white, man. They differ from you and this kid. <laughs> you don't teach children hmm. that. So right. I, I, I don't know. They... They used to say white people teach their children mm -hmm. that against us, mm -hmm. but I can't say that mm -hmm. about blacks teaching uh, the blacks that hey, I, I I wasn't brought up like that. Okay, you were, okay. Let's let's go. <laughs> let's go with, go with my side of the family. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna have to be a little little because we were always taught that there was a difference because of where the system was. Mm -hmm. The system was wrong. You gotta understand that certain things that you gotta do, you gotta do twice as much as what they do in order to get be successful. That's one of the things that we were taught. Mm -hmm. Twice as much. And this has, and this has come to true. Like I, I, my job, I had to do twice as much to get the recognition as other individuals. That do. I mean, you can check your head on order, but this is fine. This is what we were taught. And this, is, this has been found to be true with all my buddies. Mm -hmm. We knew because of the system, in order for us to be successful, we had to work twice as hard mm -hmm. to be accepted. She might not have to, but I'm going to tell you about that why, in a few minutes, why. <laughs> why didn't come in a minute? Of, 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 if you want to understand something about what's going on in, in the black community, too. And why, you know, see, she was, she, she's light-skinned. Mm -hmm. So, that, well, I'm, I'm, I'm just telling, 
I love her. My father her. was not. See, her father was not. All right. See, my so. mom was, was dark skinned too. But I had, my brother was light skin. Oh, but my sorry. brother always had it good better than we did. <laughs> <laughs> my brother and I, we used to pick up my brother because we used to say, we, we, we used to get mad because he used to always get what he wanted. And we used to pick up and say, he was a doctor. We found him out there in, in cabbage pack. <laughs> <laughs> so, and it was, but the, and he's, he's, a, he's lighter than you, isn't he? Yeah, you know, he's lighter than you. And that's, and that's my baby brother. But what we were taught is that you still have to work hard, you mm -hmm. understand what the system is doing, so you know how to attack the system, to change the system by working within the system. Mm -hmm. Sure, you're gonna run into people, and I did too. I ran into a, into a situation two weeks, two years, two or three years ago, where that uh, certain, certain individuals wanted to see me fired because they thought that I shouldn't have been in the position that I had. But you got elected to it. Well, this was before I got oh, This was when I was working another job. Oh, okay, okay. Working another job. And I don't want to go too far, but one of the three was, that, well, and they did all they could. It wasn't because of the way I did my job. Mm -hmm. It wasn't because of, I was out there being a militant or anything of that nature. It's because they thought that I should not, I was, I was, I was just a showboat and I just didn't need to be there because most of the students came to me. Mm -hmm. They did and talked to me. And they wanted to see me go. Hmm. But I got through that, and, and, and there's some certain individuals who, who stuck with me, who, who were white, who did, who, uh, who, who saw what was going on, hmm. and they, they stood up for me. But that was part of the racism thing, that they thought that I shouldn't have gone no further than hmm. certain. We, there was a ceiling hmm. that everybody had, and this other child that I had. That's one thing I can say about Wilson. Wilson is different mm -hmm. um, when it comes to it. It's just something about it. You got to know the right people here. Mm -hmm. And I find that different from Rocky Mountain. Mm -hmm. And that's, I'm kind of comparing Wilson to Rocky Mountain because of maybe population. And then we're so close together. And I don't mm -hmm. know why. There's something in Wilson, even my grandson, mm -hmm. he's never lived here. Mm -hmm. But now that he's lived here, he's uh, he, he, he's seeing that this is not where I want to be. Mm -hmm. I see that I can't, uh, I wouldn't be able to advance mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. And I told him, and I really agree with him. I told him, I, 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 I can understand your point. Uh, I felt like even when I was uh, back in the 80s, when, when I left Wilson to, I had worked here at the social services mm -hmm. for nine years, and then I was transferred to Wake County. I got to Wake County and excel so quick. <laughs> in Wake County, mm -hmm. than I could have ever done here. Right. And that's those goes back to what it is is that there was a ceiling here. There was. And it's, it it, it's, it's better, but to the point that uh, 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 I think that I should have gone much much higher than what I what I did in, in my endeavors before I retired. I retired last year, mm -hmm. and that gave me a chance to run for office because I wouldn't have been able to run for office if I had kept working. Mm -hmm. And uh, but it is to the point that we learn how to deal with it right. and, and go from there. But that's me, you know. Right. That's me and what my family and my brothers and all that uh, have done, that we have learned that we that certain things happen mm -hmm. and we had to, to, to adjust. We didn't accept it, but we adjusted it and tried to write it. So well, I thank God for His grace mm -hmm. and His mercy because it's Him, you know, and I'm glad I don't depend on man mm -hmm. by himself. So that has gotten me to be as where I am today, so I want to kind of end that with mine. We appreciate y'all letting us come out today. Well.